Shit. Alright, so we're back. Today, still going and messing with the new cluster and the Honda at ECU. All right, so right there, new cluster is in. Yes, looks dope, but we're having some connectivity issues. So basically, it connects, looks for the S300. You see the S300 on the list, and then it drops off. Connects, drops off. Lately here, it hasn't even been connecting. Then I go into the Honda app to try to connect it, and then the lightning icon says yellow which means it's connected it might stay there for a few seconds then it drops off so i email Honda. data anthony's been trying to research he had tried to get in touch with Honda a couple times unsuccessful so i emailed them they hit me back today and they say try to remove the lid we're not just talking about the kick panel we're talking about the entire ecu lid so we're going to get the kick panel off take the ecu lid off and then we're going to see if connectivity improves. If not, then that's not what it is. So if so, then we'll talk about what we may do if that actually does work. So I can not see some reasoning in that, given that you have the lid cover over the Bluetooth chip, then the kick panel over the Bluetooth chip, and then the clusters installed in the dash. So maybe I can see it. I don't I, I just honestly. I mean, Bluetooth can be funny that way. So we're going to try to get this kick panel off, get the actual ECU lid off, and let's see what happens. Let's see. These are acting stubborn as hell. Oh, wow. So this shit does not want to come off. One of those bolts is, screws is stripped. One of them is stripped, this one. Hopefully I can get a pair of vice grips on there and get that off. Four with that strip one. So let's get a, I'm not for all the bullshit today. So I'm just gonna get an extractor, get that thing out of there. done with this shit. Wow. And extractor number three gets it. Shit. So there we go. The cover's off. I'll definitely get rid of that screw. I have to clean that crap up. And as you see, Honda ECU exposed. I don't know which one of these is exactly the Bluetooth chip on there, but we could find out. But we're not gonna touch any of that because we don't have an ESD strap on or anything, so let's just leave that alone. Now, let's go to the back, hook up power. Disconnect the tender. Throw that in here, disconnect that, 
I'll go that. Go that. Boom. All right. We do need the keys because we need the ECU to power up. All right. So let's go ahead and power up the ECU along with the cluster. Let's see what happens. ECU is powered up, as you can see right there. Lights are on, green. Now, let's wait for the boot up. I will get a vacuum cleaner in there and get that crap up. Yes, it is warm in here, although I'm not like overly hot. I am sweating. I'm really hoping that this works because that will mean a lot. And basically what I'll do is if this does work, I have an idea what I'm going to do. And then we'll just go from there. That metal cover could be causing a problem. I can't see that. And I'm really hoping that that is that. So right there. Bow. We didn't even have to do much right there. As you can see, if you can tell, battery voltage popped right the hell up. Map popped up. That means that the ECU is connected. Now let's try to start this thing up. That's the real test. Let's start up and see if it reconnects. So let's give it a start. Wow, there it is. Right there, RPM's up. Battery voltage at 14. TPS is up, everything is up. As you can see, it's responsive. Let's go to the Honda app. See how, if that's up there. Honda up. Now, oh, I don't know what happened right there, but Honda app. Say connect. Hitting the lightning bolt. S300. Says connection failed. But, oh, there it goes. So it fell out. But right there, there it says it's connected. So I don't know, like, maybe I will, maybe because I restarted it up, the ECU had to boot up again. Maybe something happened there. Maybe the Honda app doesn't really work. But right now we have more connectivity on the wire where system than the Honda app so I'm not I'm not knowing if maybe it can't you know what maybe that's it maybe it you know because Bluetooth you can only connect so many devices to one Bluetooth so with me trying to go in to the actual Honda app and connect it I probably disturb that Bluetooth connection and then this app re reconnected with the Bluetooth but right now we're good I'm happy with that so far. So right now the test is if this will stay like this. So I'm actually gonna sit here for a little while and let's see if we if we maintain connection. Let's just shut this app down. We still got connection. Oh yeah, I am happy about that. Real happy about that. Let's see. Here we go. All right, so let's talk about options. So with that being said, Honda are telling us to remove the actual lid cover and remove the kick panel by having to get in there. We have to remove the kick panel. So now I have an idea of what I'm going to do. And I don't know if I want to talk about it right here, right now, but I'm probably going to do a modification down there that will eliminate that metal cover and also give a little bit of visibility 
and that's going to be coming up next in the episode so hopefully we maintain connection through the app we're going to test that because we're still going to do a road test now that we know we have connection if this connection holds the next video is going to be at least on this cluster series it's going to be a road test we really want to see if this app works we want to see VTech kick in we want to see the rev limiter app kick in we want to see all the flashing all that you want to see it i want to see it so that's what we're going to do so this video actually is shorter than i thought it was going to be we got success right off the first uh suggestion from honda so honda i really appreciate you getting back to me two times in one day big thing in these times so uh be looking for an order from Wolfpack, all right? We got some things on the way, so. All right, we out.